what your dada gave you. Shake it like a salt shaker. Shake it like a train track. Shake it like a shack shack. Shake it. <laughs> Woo, yeah. Woo. I just love that song. That's my niece, Tradesha Esibu McCann, singing her chart topping song. Lord, your love is calling me. What a joy it is to hear some good gospel music and to be related to people with talent. It runs in the family like blood runs in the vein. To God be the glory tonight. I'm glad we started off on that vein because tonight a brother is going after again. The strong man. Yeah, if we're gonna if we're gonna fight, we might as well pick a big fight. <laughs> and if we're gonna win, we're gonna win a big one to the glory of God. Are you feeling a brother up in here? Let me make a statement here that will start us and get us in the right frame of mind. I hope you have your nuts and uh, your chocolate milk and your uh, fried chana and your chickpeas boiled <laughs> and you have a bowl and you have your pen and notebook because we are going to be meticulously going after this devil and what we want to do is put our hands in his backbone and rip out his spine oh yes i thought you said you're just dancing and carrying on no you you're using very strong language yes we're going after a strong man and uh, we are going to have to activate our military mode and mindset. The strength of your enemy is the maintenance of your ignorance and mine. The strength of our enemy is his ability to have us maintain ignorance with regard to his stuff. We don't know him too much. He has fooled us into thinking he doesn't exist. The strength of our enemy is the maintenance of our ignorance. And we do not want to remain <clears throat> a people that lack knowledge in pertinent areas, particularly areas of warfare. And when I say warfare, I'm not talking about flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. I've got some scripture verses down there. Isaiah 49 and verse number 25 is the first one. Isaiah 49 and verse number 25. It says, But thus said the Lord, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away so A, the Lord is speaking. B, there are some people who are captured, so they are captives. C, the one who has captured them is called the mighty. D, even the captives of the one who is called mighty shall be taken away from the mighty. It doesn't matter how mighty the one who has captives is, the Lord can take away the captives of the mighty. Oh, glory to God. Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. Away from who? Away from the mighty. So the Lord is speaking. The Lord is not the one referred to here as mighty. He is referring to the person who, the, the personality that has captured some people. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. The prey. These are the captives. They are called captives. They are called prey. And the one who has captured them is called mighty. And then secondly, he's called terrible. Now notice, it is the Lord who acknowledges that this entity is A, mighty, and B, terrible. And C, 
that he has captives and he has prey. He has them under his auspices, under his control. There are many people that go to church under the control of demonic power. There are many pastors that get up and preach under the control of demonic power. Hmm. So, even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee. There is an entity that is contending with you, fighting with you, warring against you. Every time you make two steps forward, it knocks you one step backward. And I, the Lord says, I will save thy children. From what? The mighty and the terrible, and the one who has prey and captives, and the one who is contending with you. What will he save our children from? From the level of contention that we have. That is why you've got to fight, bro. You can't quit. You can't cave in and give up. You are fighting for the next generation. They must not go through what you have endured. Your children must have an easier time just because you were here. What is the point of us being here and then our children face the same terrible stuff that we face? We haven't weakened the enemy. We haven't done anything to give them an advantageous position. What's the point of living if all you do is live, eat, poo, and die? And your children are none, none the better. You raise them in the same country with the same nonsense happening for 50 years. You can't sort out your racial problems yet. You can't sort out the floods that are always flooding as soon as the rain wink his eye and lets down two drops. The whole nation floods. You can't do that. And you hand that legacy on to the next generation and the next and the next. No, no, no. We're not going to live like that. So is his mother-in-law and all of his stepchildren. You have heard me say that before. Matthew 12 and verse number 20, 28 and 29. We must improve. The next generation must not fight the demons that we fight. No, I can tell you about demons that I have fought, but number one, you wouldn't believe me. And number two, you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> Glory to God. The strength of your enemy is the maintenance of your ignorance. When I'm quoting the scripture, write it down. When I'm giving the points, write them down. Don't sit there like you know. Don't sit there for entertainment purposes. Don't sit there just to get the laugh. We're going to have some laugh, but we're going to have some serious stuff too. Are you feeling the feeling? Are you getting the symptoms? Matthew chapter 12 and verse 29. I'll read 28 and 29. They were telling Jesus that he was demon-possessed. They accused Jesus of being demon-possessed. And they were saying that uh, Jesus was casting out devils because he had the power of devils. There's a church that I built in a certain country, I wouldn't say, wink, wink. And there are people there in that church that I built that are saying right now that I got a demon. Well, if you know I got a demon, cast it out of the brother. It takes a discerning of spirits to, to figure out somebody has a demon. And the same power that discerns the demon is the same power that can cast him out. There are diversities of operations. Come on now. If I got a demon, cast a demon out to me. Help me out here. The point I'm making is Jesus was accused of being demon possessed. You know you are less than Jesus. They're going to accuse you too. Are you feeling me now? So... You know, people say, well, why would people say that about the man of God? Because they don't know better. They don't know differently. They're under a different uh, leader now. And people are led where they want to go. They are where the leaders led them. That is why sometimes you have to maintain that independent spirit to think for yourself. I'm not drinking anybody's Kool-Aid. This is not Jim Jones. I'm not drinking any Kool-Aid. I don't like Kool-Aid to begin with. I like fruit juice. Natural fruit juice with the water alone. No sugar added. I mean, add a small teaspoon of honey. But that's all she wrote. Glory to God. If the sugar industry were depending on me, they'll have to sell the sugar somewhere else. <laughs> Glory to God. There's a bitter taste of sugar, eh? But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. He said... The way you would know the kingdom of God is present is that devils are cast out of people. 
Or else how can you enter a strong man's house? He's calling this devil, this entity that has people captured, captive, the strong man. How can you enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods? So not only is he strong, he has goods. Except you first bind the strong man. He gives you a strategy as to how to deal with this entity called the strong man. You must first bind the strong man. Then he will spoil his house. And he says, now, whoever is not with me is against me. I don't play that kind of thing. Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever is not gathering with me is scattering abroad. <laughs> Jesus did not mince his words. Luke chapter 11 and verse number 21 is my final scripture that I'm going to read. I will refer to other scriptures, but these are the foundational ones. Luke 11 and verse 21. I'm going to read from verse 17. I'm going to read from verse 14. And as he, Jesus, was casting out a devil, and it was dumb, the devil had dumbed the person, and Jesus had a ministry that cast out devils. People call it the deliverance ministry. Well, Jesus did not have a deliverance ministry. It was normal for him to cast out devils. He didn't see it as a ministry in and of itself. It was just a normal course of events. If you're a preacher, you ought to cast out devils. It's a part of the ministry. Oh, rocker, shocker, rocker, shocker. And it came to pass when the devil was gone out of the dumb speak, and the people wondered. I've seen this happen more than one time. But some of them said, He, that's Jesus, casted out devils to Beelzebub. Beelzebub was the chief of the devil, the god of the dunghill, the demon of the garbage dung. So not only was Jesus possessed, they were claiming that he had a nasty, unclean spirit in him, the chief of Beelzebub by name, and that's how he got that kind of power. Anytime you meet with powerless people, that's the excuse they give. You operating under another spirit. Because you carry some power. And they don't know the price you pay. With the fasting and prayer and the righteous living. Now your righteous living does not give you the right to cast demons out. <clears throat> but it helps. Because you don't want a demon say, Jesus I know and Paul I know. And beat you and strip your clothes off and run you through the street naked and wounded. So you ought to have some power up in here, preacher man, preacher woman. It's not enough to have big titles and fancy suit, a nice name and shepherd stick, and all the rest of the thing that you used to rebuke the other brethren for having all that stained glass window and stuff. Now you got more than them. And your titles are bigger, fatter, weightier. Are you feeling the feeling? Are you getting the symptom? And some of them said he casted out devils. Luke eleven fourteen. 15 now. Some of them said he cast out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devil. And others tempting him sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, Jesus, knowing their thoughts. Oh, that's deep right there. That can preach all week. Knowing their very thoughts. He knew what they were thinking before they thought it. He said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against itself will fall. What he was saying was, Satan does not cast out Satan. Because if I got Beelzebub and he's a devil, why would I cast out a dumb devil and uh, strip Satan of one of his captives? No kingdom that is divided against itself can stand up. No nation that is divided against itself can stand up. And so when you have this kind of behavior in a church, in a business, people divisive and hating on each other, and you stoking the fire for convenience sake, that nation is not going to go far. That business is not going to go far. That church is not going to go far. That organization has signed its death warrant. It's going to be stuck, and strangers will come and enjoy the fruits and benefits of the people if satan be divided against himself how shall his kingdom stand because ye say i cast out devils to beelzebub 
And if I by Beelzebub cast out devil, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. Your children shall rise up and judge you. But if I with the finger of God cast out devil, no doubt the kingdom of God is come to you. He said, when you see the finger of God casting out devils, there is no doubt, there is absolutely no doubt that the kingdom of God has come to you. Glory to his name. The kingdom of God has come to you when you see demons cast out. That is a, a sign of the presence of the kingdom of God. Oh, glory to his name. And then he gets into his discourse. He is identifying a demonic entity, demonic power called the strong man. This is a chief serpent, a leading demonic power that gets into a person and then allows other uh, entities, demons to come in. He is the one in charge, but he can put them in front so that when you cast out the small boys, you're happy, but he's hiding in, in, in the background. That is why he's a strong man. He's a senior. He runs the show. He calls the shots. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. So here we go. When a strong man armed, not only is he strong, he's armed. It's not enough that he was strong. He's not depending on his strength. He depends on weapons. When a strong man armed, keepeth his house, his goods are in peace. He keeps his house. He's militant. He's watching over his house. He's not uh, ad hoc, willy-nilly. He's watching over stuff. He keeps his stuff. He knows the, the condition of his herds and his flocks. He knows how high the grass is growing in the yard. He knows that the cow is about to give birth in two weeks. He knows. Hey, 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 hey. No wonder the Bible says the hands of the diligent make it rich, not the sloppy. When you want to get up in life, your get up and go has to get up and go. You've got to stop murmuring, complaining, depending on other people. You've got to find creative ways of getting stuff done and not bother with the excuses and the, the rain fell and the sun didn't shine today and everybody's not buying and the market is bad. Look, look, get off your rump, get off your duff and get busy with what you've got to get busy with. Stop with the excuses. Other people are making a warm living while you're all up there complaining and murmuring. So what the rain fell? Get an umbrella. So what the sun shine hot? Get a, get a hat and some dark glasses. And go all day like you're in a Vogue magazine and strut your stuff. Glory to God. I remember as a teenager, I used to sell at the street corner as a teenager. And a lot of the elders and leaders in the church used to mock me. For being in the street, you don't have any ambition. You're a high school graduate and that is what you're going to do. The thing was, I used to work for more money than those jokers. And a lot of them, with all their big talk, would come ever so often to borrow. Most of them paid back. Some of them did not. The same money that I got from sitting there and selling they, that they were mocking at, they had need for it more than me. Sometimes they couldn't wait for the day to be finished. They'd come while I was in the middle of the business. Uh, I, I need to borrow a, a, a 5000 I need to borrow a, a, a 20000 I know you got it. Of course you know I got it because I'm busy. My hands are busy. You don't have it because you're lazy. <laughs> Ow That's a long time ago. We're talking many decades ago. So now I can talk about it because a lot of those people are not around anymore. And if they are wrong, let them hear me saying it out loud. They can verify, say, yeah, I used to be one of them. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Rev. You used to rescue me a lot of times. To God be the glory. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him, there needs to be an outside agency that is stronger than the strong man. As strong as the strong man is, my Jesus stronger. <laughs> I just had to get that one in. Oh, rock a shocker, rock a shocker. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor, he strips him, wherein he trusted.
He trusted in his armor because it succeeded before and divided his spoil. He's doing all the battle with the strong man, but when he gets the spoil, he doesn't keep it all for himself. Oh, that can preach all week long. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me is scattering abroad. When the unclean spirit, the same strong man, is gone out of a man, he walketh through the dry places seeking rest, and findeth none. And he said, I will return unto my house wherein I came out. He has a sense of ownership to the person that he came out, was cast out from. And when he cometh to the person, he findeth it the house, the person's body is the house, he findeth it swept and garnished. It's clean. But it has no occupant. And this is where a lot of you deliverance ministers, you are not doing the person a favor. And I've, I used to do the same thing too. So I know what I'm talking about. Cast demons out of people and send them on their merry way without telling them, if you don't receive Christ in your heart, in your body, that evil entity that went away is going to get seven more worse than himself and come back and you will be worse off. You're not doing people a favor when they come for deliverance and you just deliver them from the evil one because when the house is swept and clean and there's no strong man in there, he comes back to the house to see what condition it is in. And if he doesn't find a stronger than he in there living, that's Christ, he will get demons quick and come back into that house. And the person's condition is worse off. After all that deliverance, in a week or so, they are worse off. They have eight demons in them now instead of one the strong man and depending on how many the strong man had with him at that time are you feeling me now then goeth he and take it to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in the person and dwell live homestead reside there and the last state of that man is worse than the first their condition later on is worse it is better for them to have had the one strong man in them than now to have eight demonic powers working inside of them. The strong man. The strength of your enemy is the maintenance of your ignorance. Why are you saying that? Because I want you to know that you need to know. And a lot of people when they hear subjects of this nature being taught, they say, oh, I know about that. I know, I know, I know. No, you don't. You don't know that is why when somebody is possessed, you don't even go to try to get the spirit out to the person. You leave it alone. You wait for the deliverance minister. Well, if you knew so much, how come you're not effective in bringing deliverance to people? Knowledge should lead to demonstration, manifestation. Knowledge should lead to deliverance. You should walk in the power of God because you know. Because my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge leads to destruction not knowledge. So if there's no deliverance happening in your life, you're not bringing people to freedom, then you don't know. You're just pretending like you know. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call your bluff tonight, tonight. I'm calling everybody's bluff. Calling your bluff, calling you on your stuff. Glory to God. So here we go. I'm now starting out. It's already 7.20. 20 minutes just to read the scripture and give some introductory remarks. I now see what my wife has said. You take too long to get to the meat of the matter. Come on, get with it, bro. <laughs> Glory to God. That woman knows what she's talking about. There is an entity, a strong, powerful, demonic entity called a strong man. He is strong because he has captives, more than one. He is strong because he has been in the bloodline of this particular person that is his captive for generations. He has a sense of entitlement. He knows how to capture them. He knows their weak spots. He knows how to get to the family. He knows that some family's weakness is money. He knows that some family's weakness is sex. He knows that some family's weakness is lying. He knows that some family's weakness is alcohol. He knows that some family's weakness is they want to get power from the supernatural world and they dibble and dabble in all kinds of abracadabra, ocus-pocus, olivus-focus, friscus-dominus. 
You heard enough? <laughs> I now fire my first shot. This entity will stay in a family, would stay in a generation, would stay in a village, would stay in a community, would stay in a nation and plague that nation, plague that community, plague that family, plague that church, plague that business for generations because nobody has had the nerve to figure out what's happening and then to take action if they could and get rid of the strong man. And so you'll have nations that go through a cycle of the same nonsense every five years, every four years. Same nonsense. Every election, same nonsense. Every ten years, same nonsense. Same nonsense. The family goes through it. Every four years, same nonsense. Over and over. There is an identifiable cycle of a particular negative recurrence. Same nonsense. Happening over and over. If the leaders are PhDs, same nonsense. If they are dentists, same nonsense. If they are lawyers, same nonsense. If they are doctors, same nonsense. It does not matter if they are an engineer, same nonsense. Black, white, polka dotted, same nonsense. There's no change. Because an entity called a strong man, a demonic power, has a hammer lock on that family, a hammer lock on that nation, a hammerlock on that business, a hammerlock on that bloodline. And so you find drunkenness is a part of the family. Uh, unwanted pregnancies is a part of the family. Abortion is a part of the family. Uh, going constantly to the court is a part of the family. Sexual misbehavior and many, many children with many, many men and many, many women is a part of the family. Drug addiction is a part of the family. It's been in the... In, the family for generations. Lying. Some families are known for their lying. It's a part of the family. Some are known for their liquor. It's a part of the family. Some are known to be cougars. They're always running down little boys and trying to get little boys in bed with them. That's a part of their family. The women of that family like little boys. They don't like big men. They pretend to like big men, but what they like is little boys. It's a part of the family. When you go through the family line, you notice a propensity, a proclivity, a particular behavior that great 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 granny had great great granny had granny had mother had sisters already have there is a propensity a leaning towards this particular behavior because there is an entity called a strong man that has that family in its control and is driving the family running the family like blood runs in a vein that strong demonic power is running that family Jesus said the first thing you must do is bind him. You must say with your mouth, Strong man, I address you in the authority of Jesus' name. You're coming in the name of one who is stronger than the strong man. You're not coming in your name. Your, your shrill voice and your noise that you make and stomping your foot and hollering, all of that is a waste of time. You've got to come with power from on high, not with being vociferous and noisy. You've got to bring anointing when you come up in here. Up in here. First, bind the strong man. How do you do that? I'm telling you how to do that. You open your mouth and say with authority and with power. You don't have to scream. Strong man of whatever. You would know whatever it is because you have noticed the particular trend, the particular behavior. It has been in this family for too long and it has got to go. Somebody in that bloodline has got to take a stand. And that person, that's why I'm saying the strength of your enemy is the maintenance of your ignorance. Nobody took the time to see what's running through the family. Reverend, did you take that time to see what's running through your family? You got that right. I did. And I let the enemy know it stops at me. Meaning, you're not going to continue running this, this, uh, this scam on this family anymore because I have knowledge of scripture and I'm taking a stronger than you and you are going to be dealt with severely and permanently. And you have to go and never come back. Find some other place to get to. But not here. The blood of Jesus against you. Hey, 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 hey. Somebody has to take a stand. Somebody has to admit that this thing is happening. Somebody has to get disgusted with it. Fed up with it. And they have got to decide to rise up. And you can't now come like little putty tat. 
Eh? You can't come as a putty tat. You've got to come like Mufasa. You've got to roar against Scar and all them hyenas that have been haunting you and nipping at your heels. You've got to go ballistic. You've got to go nuclear. You've got, you, you, got the, hey, 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 hey. You've got to go in beast mode. You've heard me talk about beast mode. First, you must bind the strong man. Tell him, I bind you. Tell him, I bind you. Tell him it stops at me. When it says it stops at you, it doesn't mean that you are the last one it will control. No, you're not controlling me. No, 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 no. You, you, you have got to go. In other words, what you're saying is, I am stopping you. I am the red light in this farm. I am my family's red light. When you see me, you know you've got to stop. When you see me, you have to cease and desist. I have taken out a cease and desist order against you. You will not do this in this family anymore. Hey, ho, oh, devil, you have got to go. You've got to go. You've got to go. You've got to go. Go, go, go. You've got to go. Loose your hold. Loose your hold. Loose your hold in the powerful name of Yeshua the Messiah. You've got to take your hands off. Take your filthy hands off. Take it off. Take it off. Loose him and let him go. Loose her and let her go. Loose this bloodline and loose the business and loose this nation and let it go. Let it go in the name of Jesus. I'm not playing with you. This is no Dolly House I'm playing. I'm, I'm declaring war on you. It's got to stop and it stops with me. Enough is enough. I want my stuff and I want it now. You've got to be serious about this thing. Some of you are playing. I know you're playing because sometimes I'll just ask. I'll say, okay, this message that we're doing tonight, I'd like you to share it. If you, if you get nine shares, you get plenty. Fifty people watching and only nine of them will respect the word of God. You're still playing after all this time. And then you have the nerve to say, oh, Rev, you sound like you're fretting. Of course I'm fretting. I'm fretting with you that after all this word that you have heard, you're still rebellious and disobedient. I'm fretting at you because a simple ask that I ask to share a message and you don't share it. It shows me the level of rebellion that is still in you. It shows me that you're taking the word of God lightly. It shows me that you're still laser fair. You're still playing around. You're still joking. That's why the devil got you by the throat. You can't obey a simple instruction. You've got to stop playing around. Oh, you're not my pastor. You can't tell me that. That's why I tell you that. You couldn't be my member either. I would take you to another church and tell them to have this person here. And uh, don't let them come back to our church. They're not, they're not, I wouldn't say they're not serious. They're, they have a level of anointing that's heavy. It's too heavy for me. They need to be in another church. I've done it before. I've walked people out. Because they have no intentions of changing. They are there year in, year out. Just holding things back. Time to go, man. I'm not trying to get a full church just for a full church sake. I want people that can be trained. I want people that can stand up and fight. I want people when I'm gone from there, when I'm traveling somewhere, I don't have to worry. When I, you know, back in the day, I used to ask my wife, how did service go? How, I would call from the foreign country. How is service going? I don't call anymore. And when I come back, she said, you don't want to know. I said, no, I don't want to know. She said, why? I said, it went well. I said, how do you know that? I said, the people that are here, look, they needed the guts to stick around so long and to serve the Lord with a, with a level of excellence they're serving the Lord with. These people are not playing, so I'm not worried. I don't ask anymore how did the service go. I, I just smile. And sometimes I call, I tell her, I said, y'all had good church, eh? You're glad to get rid of me. <laughs> she laugh, I laugh, say, all right, honey, Mwah. see you later. Amen. They're not playing. And, and preachers would come to our church. When they come, they say, Rev, you got some good people here. I say, you got that right? Say, you, no, I'm not kidding. You got some top notch top quality people here. I could feel the atmosphere is different. You've got a bunch of leaders with you. I say, you got that right. Say, man, I'm jealous of you. Say, I'm jealous of me too. <laughs> oh, brother, man, you got to raise up warriors. I watched a, a little reading that Mike Tyson said when he was uh, 13 years old, he met this man, Cos Diamato, this, uh, this trainer of fighters. And Cos Diamato told Tyson at age 13, he said, Young man, if you stay with me, you will become the youngest heavyweight champion of the world. There will be some discipline that I will demand of you. There will be some things I'll tell you to do you don't want to do. There will be some tones I'll talk to you. You're not going to feel nice. But if you stick around me long enough, you will become the youngest heavyweight champion of the world. Did Tyson become the youngest heavyweight champion of the world? Yes. Why? He had a leader in cost. What kind of leader are you? Nobody is coming up for you. He created 
the youngest heavyweight champion of the world? What are you creating with the stuff that you know in the area of your skill? Who have you trained to be as good as you or better than you? If man had Bruce Lee, who do you have? You got nobody because I used to work with a, with a contractor back in the day. And every time it came to a technical part of the job, he would send me or somebody to buy something that wasn't really necessary so that he could distract us from, from that critical part where if we learned this thing here, he don't have to be the only one that knows it. He was a man that did not want anybody to know everything that he knew. He would keep secrets of how to construct this building to himself. And when it came to the technical part, he sent us off somewhere. And by the time we got back, it was done. We didn't see how it got done. What kind of a leader is that? He was a man afraid of his own shadow. Afraid that in the future, we may take over the market. And instead of people asking him to build their houses, they will ask us. Because we were hungry. We were coming up. We were looking for training. We were looking to learn some kind of skill up in here. Are you feeling me now? And there are pastors like that. They would not teach the people the secrets of power, the secrets of fasting, the secrets of prayer. What are you hiding for? You're going to die and take everything with you? Train somebody for God's sake. Show somebody for God's sake. Tell somebody what your secret is. Reverend, how you know so much scripture? Crudence concordance. Reverend, how you know so many words? Dictionary. Those are two secrets that I had for years. And people say, oh, he know a lot of word, man. He's just, he like a walking encyclopedia. No. You got to have a dictionary. You're a pastor, you don't have a dictionary. Shame on you. You got to have several big print dictionaries so you don't have time to fight and not be able to see the word. You've got to have a crudence concordance, an exhaustive crudence concordance or some other concordance so that when you are looking for scripture, you can find them easily. In the Crudence Exhaustive Concordance. I've said this over and over. And y'all still don't have a concordance. Shame on you with your rebellious hips. I'm giving you good advice for free. And you're not listening. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at your stubbornness. I'm mad at your rebellious hips. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. That's what you're doing. Practicing witchcraft. When you... Get an instruction from an obvious voice for God and you don't do what you're told to do. You don't do what you're asked to do. I can't stand people who don't listen to advice and instruction. I'll stick around for a while and afterward I'll tell you, no, no, we can't get together. We can't go together. Two cannot walk together unless they agree. I'm dropping gold at your feet and you trampling on it and throwing it in the mud. We don't need to be with each other anymore. It's time to go. I've got to go. I'm wasting time with you. You don't want to learn. You're too pig-headed, stiff-necked, unable to take training. You're like a wild horse. You just wouldn't buck and, and, and be broken. You just want to run with the wild horses. Go ahead. So the strong man, first you have to bind him before you can spoil his goods, which means take away what he has gotten there. Now notice in Luke eleven twenty one, 21, he is armed. He is strong. He has a house and he is armed. He is not dependent on his strength alone to handle you and your mother and them. He is dependent on his strength and his armor. And it says he keeps his house, which means he is militant. He is watchful. He is alert. His house. He's got a palace, this strong man. So that's why he's a king. That's why he's a strong man. He's a prince of devil. He's a king, the strong man. He's a monarch, the strong man, this demonic entity. He's a ruling prince and his goods are in peace. Because he's militant, he's armed, he's alert, and he's strong. Four things you just got about the strong man. What did he just say? What is he meaning four things? That's your problem right there. You're not a discerning hearer. You're here for the joke. You're here for the fun. But you don't hear to imbibe and drink and soak up. Makosa karebe mando kashaya. He is strong, one. He is armed, two. He has a house, three. He is militant, four. He's a king, a ruling prince, and his goods are in peace because he's militant and watchful. He has a palace. He's a king. 
He's no small boy here. He's a big one. I had a preacher, Pastor Van Tull, back in the day. I attended his service a couple of times. And when I walk in, he, he smile at me, he give me a signal to come over, and he'll say, I got some big boys here today. <laughs> when he said big boys, what he meant was some heavy duty demon. That's what he's dealing with. I got some big boys here today. Or you'd say, don't worry yourself. I got some small boys around the place. He knows that he can handle them easily. Glory to God. Thank God for ministers like that that can handle demonic powers easily. I am tired of people who are afraid of demons and call themselves Christian. Tired of them. Glory to God. So let me go back again. You must first bind a strong man before you can spoil his house because he is armed. He is militant and watchful. He's got a palace. He's a king. He's a prince and his goods are in peace. A stronger than he must come upon him to overcome him. Though he is strong, though he is the captain of the mighty, though he is the, 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 the prison warder and is called the terrible, there is a stronger than he. You've got to know in dealing with generational uh, demonic strongholds, that there is one who is stronger than he. Yes, my Jesus is stronger. Oh yes, you've got to remember that one out of three angels went with him. That means two out of three angels stayed with God. What does that mean? It means he's outnumbered two to one. The devil and all of his power are outnumbered two to one. He is hopelessly outnumbered. Not only that, Jesus said, If I by the finger of God cast out Satan... Jesus did not need all of the fingers of God, nor the hand of God, nor the arm of God, nor the whole uh, uh, person of God. Just a finger. One finger of God is mightier than all of the combined uh, powers that hell can muster. No matter how hell can muster power, God's one finger is stronger than all of the combined forces of El Diablo. You've got to know that your God is stronger. You've got to know that your Savior is stronger. You've got to know that the blood is stronger. You've got to know that the word is stronger. You've got to know that when you walk in love, that love is stronger than hate. You've got to know that truth is stronger than a lie every day of the week and that Satan is a defeated foe. You've got to know that. And stop giving the devil all the props these church people give him like he's some fearsome, terrible. Well, you got to be careful, Rev. You got to be careful what you say because there might be some backlash. Ah, come on. We had enough of that. If he had all that backlash power, why are we still here giving him a run for his money? If he had all that backlash power, how come he's the one that comes out and is cast out? And he's the one on the floor puking and vomiting. He's the one that's begging to stay or begging to go. And, and he's the one with all of his mouth. He's the one that has to leave. Don't let Satan... Make you a fool and into thinking that he's stronger than God. He's not. Jesus said, I beheld Satan like lightning. Before the lightning could flash, Michael had already kicked him out of heaven. Because he was anointed for music. Michael was anointed for war. A warrior and a musician in a fight, you know who will win. Now, if he threw a guitar at Michael to play, that's another story. He would win that kind of a contest because he was a musician, a worship leader. He was not a warrior. And God's got angels that move so fast that before Satan could blink, he found himself hurling down to earth. Couldn't figure out what hit him. That's how fast the fight was finished when he fought against the angel of God. God does not fight Satan because Satan is not in God's class. He's not in God's category. God has angels who deal with him. It's not like Satan is over here and God is the opposite of Satan. The opposite of Lucifer is Michael, not Jesus, not God, not the Holy Spirit. He's not even in the category of God. Why do Christian people are so, why are you so terrified of demonic powers? You can handle that devil. God has given us power. He has given us power to lay our hands upon the sick and set captives. And in his name, every demon shall go. 
So I don't care what the devil's gonna do. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care what the devil's gonna do. The word of faith is my sword and shield. And Jesus is the Lord of the way I feel. He has given us power to lay our hands upon the sick and set captives free. And in his name, every demon shall flee. So I don't care what the devil tries to do. Hey, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't care what the devil's gonna do. Well, the word of faith is my sword and shield. And Jesus, Lord of the way. I feel well. The word of faith is my sword and shield. And Jesus is the Lord of the way I feel well. The word of faith is my sword and shield. We're getting ready. Understand that some, some devils are coming on Sunday to our congregation. To God be the glory. Let them come. Glory to God. May God take charge and deliver from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. As stronger than he must come upon him and overcome him and take his armor, his protection, and divide his spoils. <clears throat> Don't be selfish when the Lord release the spoils of the mighty into your hand. Divide it. That, that means don't take all for yourself. I'm going to stop right there because that one most people don't want. Jesus alone, Jesus alone had information on the strong man. When Jesus come, came on the scene, the, the 12 disciples, none of them had information on the strong man. The prophets didn't have information on the strong man. But Jesus knew this strong man. And he gives us some information and insight of the strong man. And calls the people under the strong man's control the captives of the mighty. That's why you can't deliver yourself from the thing you've been trying all of these years and you're still the captive of the mighty. The mighty has a hammer lock on you. You get five months of freedom and you're back in the mess. You get six months of freedom and you're back in the mess. You get one year of freedom and you're back, you're back, you're back in the mess. You, you, you need a stronger than the strong man who has you bound to deliver you from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and forever. Amen, amen, amen. Shout a good amen up in here. Yes. Jesus gives information on the strong man. God calls the, the, the strong man mighty. God must know what mighty is. And that is why you, you can't be trivial with the demonic world. You have to have a healthy sense of respect for the enemy, but not overly so. A lot of us, we go overboard with the respect and regard. When God creates a being and anoints him and he has that influence in heaven... You're not playing with some little, little small boy here. You're dealing with a mighty entity. He has some power. Why would the scripture say he has given us power over all the powers of the enemy? What does that mean? The enemy has powers. Don't play with this thing. Don't say Satan has no power. He does have power. Why does God have to give you power over his if he doesn't have power to begin with? Don't try with this devil in your own strength. And live this blasé, laser fear life. And you, you coming up in here trying to talk about, I'm going to get rid of the devil. You <laughs> be very careful. You've got to respect your enemy. Somebody said they're going to take you out. They're going to try. Somebody said to poison you because you're a hungry belly dog. You've got to stop eating. Eat at home. Don't take people's threats lightly. Don't play with people who have the audacity to make statements like that. No, I'm not going to play with that. I'm eating at home, not even the restaurant. I'm not going anymore. I'm eating at home. Are you feeling me now? God calls this strong man mighty. God must know. But God said, I will take away his captive. I will take away the people that are captured by the one who's called mighty and terrible. And I will contend with him, which means I will send warriors to war against him. Because remember, he's not God's equal. 
Yeah, and he will save your children if there's a day and a time when we need our children to be covered with all the wicked uh, agendas that are coming after our children with such ferocity. They, they, they not only tempt them on the street, they, they, they're now bringing their wickedness in the schoolroom, in the classroom. They bring all kinds of stuff and our ch innocent children are being subject to a level of attack the likes of which we have never known nor have never been subjected to. Glory to God. There is an entity called a strong man. The scripture calls him A, strong man. The scripture calls him B, mighty. The scripture calls him C, terrible. The scripture calls us who are under his control, when and if we are, praise, captive. He keeps us as spoil. Why? Because he's a predator. He calls a strong man a predator. He's a hunter for souls. He's a prison warder that keeps his prisoners and a hunter for souls. He goes after souls. He knows you've got weakness uh, uh, for women. He's going to send your kind of women. He knows you like them black. He's going to send black women to you. He knows you like them fair. He's going to send fair women to you. He knows you like them with long hair. He's going to send long hair women to you. Whatever you like, he's going to send your taste to you. You like liquor? He's got the kind that you like. Jack Daniels, he's got Jack Daniels for you. XM, he's got XM 25 year old for you. Uh, surgical, he's got that for you too. All right? Are you feeling me now? You like weed? You like tampi? You like ganja? You like marijuana? You like what? You like crack? You like cocaine? You, whatever you like, he's got it to serve up to you. And he will have friends bring it to you for free. And he'll have them give it to you on trust. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. You like to lie? He'll find things for you to lie about. He'll find people for you to lie on. He'll find people for you to lie to. Are you feeling me? You're racial. He's going to bring people into your country who don't look like you, don't talk like you, don't smell like you, don't dress like you, and get you all up on, in arms and antsy because you think you're the cat's meow and the dog's bow wow. Look, this strong man is armed with defensive and offensive weapons. Yes, he has an armor on in spite of his strength and weaponry. And, uh, and protection. Jesus is the one who's qualified and he's the only one who can tell us who is strong. Yes. In Psalm 2 and 1, he's called the king of the earth, this strong man. But no matter how armed and dangerous he is, God can stop him. God will contend with him and God will save our children. May I pray now that God will save our children from the hand of the mighty and terrible in the power of Jesus' mighty name. This strong man has a geographic location. He's a keeper of goods. He has weapons. And only somebody stronger can deal with him. Are you feeling me now? Are you feeling me now? Oh yes. Jesus said you must first bind the strong man. First bind the strong man. First bind the strong man. You've got to enter into his house and bind him. Yes, yes. Because he keeps the goods. He holds on to it. And he has weapons to fight you off with. And he trusts in his weapons because his weapons are worked before. He knows how to work his agenda and how to work his weapon. He's a thief. That's why he has captured some souls. Oh, yes. And if you don't deal with him, he's going to deal with you. The reason some people don't deal with a strong man is because of ignorance. They don't know. The reason some people don't deal with a strong man is because of fear. But the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a strong mind. Why people don't deal with a strong man? My church don't believe it. My bishop never taught on that. I never hear my preacher talk anything about no strong man. Well, he's getting ready to talk about it next week. But I'm talking about it this week. Are you feeling it, brother? Daniel had three weeks where angels fought with a strong man. And the strong man kept angels on assignment from fulfilling their assignment for 21 days. Are you feeling me? What is my point? The strong man is so strong and fierce. That even angelic hosts on assignment from Yahweh were unable to fulfill their assignment until they had help from other angels who came to fight because the strong man had them tied up for three weeks. Yes. And you and I can assist our angel on assignment uh, to get the answer to us by continuing to pray. Daniel pressed his prayer. He was insistent, consistent, and doggedly determined in his prayer. He did not stop to pray and to eat no, no uh, pleasant bread until he got from heaven what he was praying for. Angels are susceptible to the strong man. That's the point that I'm making now here. He has the power to confront angels on assignment that come to bring your blessing. The, the strong man always confronts angels from heaven that come to bring your blessing. 
But may your angel get through. May my angel get through. May our angel of blessing get through. I plead the blood of Jesus against every strong man that's trying to blight and prevent my angel of blessing from coming to me and releasing what God has for me. I want everything God has for me. I want my blessing and I want it now. I want everything God has for me. I want my victory and I want it now. I want everything that God has for me. I want my breakthrough and I want it now. I want everything that God has for me. I want my healing and I want it now. I want everything that God has for me. I want my deliverance and I want it now. I want everything that God has for me. I want my husband and I want him now. I want everything God has for me. I want my wife and I want her now. I want everything God has for me. I want my property and I want it now. I want everything God has for me. I want my buildings and I want them now. Pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men give into my bosom? I call forth all of my destiny helpers. I call forth all of your destiny assistants. May God open the door and cause the flood and a deluge of blessing to come at you, to run you down. May blessing chase you down and chase me down. May blessing find your name and find your address and come rushing at high speed to give you all that heaven has for you. May your destiny explode. May God anoint you with power from on high. May your voice be like the voice of thunder and may demons quake and tremble and remove themselves from the environment that you are in. May your very presence without you having to say anything cause demonic powers to shake, rattle and roll. May God break the hex, break the vex, break the jinx, break the curse, break the spell, break the blight from over you and give you victory the likes of which you have not seen before to the glory of God. Oh yes, sir. Yes, madam. May March month not come to an end until you shout to God with a voice of triumph. May this be the month where God delivers the goods. May this be the month where blessings come, good measure, press, shake and running over. May this be the month where your joy, the thing that would give you joy and laughter comes and drops at your feet. May heaven send the package that you've been praying for. May heaven send the goods that you've been believing for. May heaven give you the victory in the fight that you have fought for decades and fought for years. May God send money that you can't count. May God send cash that you can't quantify. May it come in large amounts in different denominations to the glory of God. Somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I feel my preacher energy coming on, coming on. Oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The angels are susceptible to the strong man. He has a power, the strong man has power to confront your angel on assignment, to confront your angel of blessing. Oh yes, the strong man is a military personality. He is strong, A. He is armed, B. He is not a civilian. This strong man is a man of war. This strong man is a thorough destroyer and an alert dog that is watching to see any encroachment upon the property. This strong man has a palace and he has subjects who are under his control. This strong man is a controller over other demonic spirits. This strong man is a power source and a dominant demon. This strong man is a prison warder and a commanding general. This strong man is a captain, a senior serpent, a vile snake over principalities and powers. This strong man, he is the one that assigns evil. He is the one that assigns family bondage. This strong man is like a pharaoh that's pursuing and coming and hunting you down again and again. This strong man is like Goliath that challenges you on a daily basis. This strong man is a fearless devil that has our weaknesses figured out. This strong man is an opposing power to the believer who wants to walk with God. This strong man has got military training and you've got to get into beast mode and to take no prisoners. Oh yes, yes, yes. This strong man sends out small agents but he remains hiding in the background. This strong man, to get rid of him, you need to do a thorough deliverance and it must be done to the glory of God. Yes, he sends out imps to fight you while he hides in the background. Oh yes, this strong man attacks your business. He attacks your calling and he's vicious and ruthless in attacking your family and your health. Oh yes, he attacks your marriage again, again and again. Some people are married for years and in a very miserable marriage. The husband is nothing to talk about. He's a vagabond and a scoundrel. He won't give no money and he ain't getting no honey. And he's complaining and murmuring all the time. Wouldn't go and get himself a job and come and 
sit his, his pompous duff up in the house, eating everything on sight and bringing nothing in the house. And then you're married to this uh, Doberman Pincher. You thought you had a beauty queen, only to find a Doberman Pincher barking and biting at you. This cantankerous, troublemaking uh, uh, thingamajig that you call a spouse, and you don't want to go home because her mouth is hot like pepper, and you're tired of the constant nagging and nagging and nagging and nagging, and you, you're afraid to go to your own house. That's why you stay out with the boys and drink a little longer, and you hope they'll go another round because you don't want to go home to meet with Miss Miza, and her surname is Rebel. You have married to Miza Rebel, and you can't have peace in the house. Constant conflict, constant fighting, constant argument, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. Your house is not a place of peace, it's not a place of love, it's not a place of joy, it's a war zone. The strong man is the entity that attacks businesses, attacks callings, attacks marriages, attacks your academic life, attacks your finances, attacks your health. Oh God, man, when you get true and thought you had it licked, he comes off again. This strong man will scare off your helpers, scare off people that come to bless you, scare off deliverance ministers. This strong man will confront deliverance ministers. Oh yes, he makes people small-minded and he's very formidable in his nature. Jesus said, it is possible to bind him. You must first bind the strong man. And he says that because it is possible to bind him. And you've got to bind him. You've got to bind him. You've got to lift up your voice and bind him. You've got to open up your mouth like a trumpet and bind him. You've got to give the winds a mighty voice and bind him. You cannot keep quiet anymore. You've got to bind him. You've got to walk through the house like a ravening maniac and bind him. You've got to bind him in the washroom. You've got to bind him in the bath. You've got to bind him in the bedroom. You've got to bind him in the closet. You've got to bind him in the hallway. Bind him in the kitchen. You've got to bind him, bind him, bind him, bind him, bind him, bind him, bind him. Bind him. You've got to go nuclear on this thing. You've got to go ballistic on this thing. You've got to go intercontinental ballistic missile on this thing. You've got to go beast mode in this thing. You've got to go radical on this thing. You've got to get angry with this thing. You've got to get mean as a junkyard dog and fight and bite this thing. You've got to be ruthless with this thing. You've got to be vicious with this thing. We're not playing with you. Your language has got to change. Your facial expression has got to change. Your very aura has got to change. When they look at you, they must see a lion coming with your eyes red and your, your fangs hanging. You're like Kong Dracula and you're ready to suck some blood up in here. I'm not going to play with you anymore. I'm not going to play with you anymore. If you want some, come get some. But you better be willing to take some because I'm not going to take it lying down. I'm a warrior in case you didn't know. If you didn't know, now you know. It is possible to bind the strong man. It is possible to bind the strong man. Stop going to the Obia house and bind the strong man. Stop going for a read and bind the strong man. Stop going to the palm reader and bind the strong man. Stop going to Haiti. Stop going to Suriname. Stop going to 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 mother with the red door. Stop going to father with the red door. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. The strong man is formidable in nature, but you can bind the strong man. You can render him powerless. You can take his spoils. You can get back seven times of what he has stolen from you. But you've got to have the stronger than the strong man with you. How do you deal with the strong man? You've got to surrender your life to Christ completely. This half-hearted, half-baked, half tail Christianity that is around the place now, People want miracle without commitment. They want victory without a fight. They want religion without righteousness. They want preachers who will tickle their ears and tell them what they want to hear. You've got to surrender your life to Christ completely and stop pussyfooting around the place and playing these games that you're playing. You're playing games, man. Don't tell me anything different. You're playing games. You've been lying to us. The Lord has been discerning you day after day, year after year, and you've been lying to us. And every time we get an inkling and the Lord gives us a word of knowledge about you, you lie to us again. 
I'm weary with people lying to us. Telling us part of the story. Telling us half of the story. Telling us nothing about the story. Stop lying to us. We're tired of you lying to us and playing games. I know when people lie to me. I have a sixth sense for lies. The atmosphere gets funky. I smell a stench. I literally smell something funky. Even though the person has a nice perfume and everything. The minute they lie, that funky odor comes. The minute they lie, I feel like somebody threw lead in my stomach. There are ways that the Lord will tell me this person is lying to you. I've had ministers of the gospel lie to me for years. And I'm counting the lies. One of them lied so much, it's over 2,000 lies in two and a half years. 2,000 lies. How you can lie so? I have my eye on liar the lion. Because I know he does come with some good ones. But there was a younger fella named Thibault. He come from some village, the Aaron Tobago. He say his father was Tobago's best fisherman. He caught a fish a mile wide, 80 feet in span. He had to tie it to the boat and swim back to land to get his brother Eric to give him a hand. You hear lie? That is lie. Lie? You hear lie? Lion the lion, he laughed till he sweat, he said, Mr. Debo, and say nothing yet. If you want to hear, <laughs> hear about fishing, let me blow your mind. Now listen to something. I'm talking about fish. Sitting down correct. <laughs> the fish your father caught, to you it was great. 80 feet a mile wide. A mile wide and 80 feet in span. The fish your father caught a mile wide and 80 feet in span. To you it was great. But it's them small fish my father does use so bait. <laughs> you hear lie? Preacher Percy say if you tell a lie you're going to hell as soon as you die. <laughs> and of course Preacher Percy, he's lying there too. Because if you repent, you're not going to hell as soon as you die. You're going to heaven if you repent. Glory to God. You must surrender your life to Christ and you must surrender it completely. 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 Completely surrender. And then you must war against the strong man. War against him. Don't take it lying down. Don't be iffy and, and, and half baked and half. No. No half measures will work against an entity that has controlled your generation for years. You have got to be meticulously particular and ruthless. You've got to be mean as a junkyard dog. Because junkyards got serious scrap iron. They don't have food there. So the junkyard dogs are mean. It's not like the dog is at, at a restaurant. You must surrender your life to Christ completely. You must war against any stubborn situation that you see happening. There's a strong man trying to militate against you. Let me say that again. Any stubborn situation that you see happening in your life, it is an indicator of a strong man at work fighting you all, fighting you. And trying to make a comeback. Any situation that is recurring like a decimal and it will not go. Any situation that is adverse, that is negative and it's recurring and you, it just seems to happen again, again and again. There's a strong man at work against you and you, you have got to look. Sometimes you got to take off your makeup and let the strong man see your face. You may frighten him with that. You, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sometimes you just can't go nice. Some demons, you got to go ugly on them. You got to get ugly with them. You got to get vicious with them. You got to fast and pray. Push the plate aside. I'm not going to eat until I get victory. No, I'm not going to eat. I don't want no meat in my... I don't, look, I don't want food today. I'm going to deal with this devil that's trying to deal with me. You got to stand up to the thing that's standing up to you. You got to war against the thing that's declared war on you. You got to fight the thing that fights you. You got to confront the thing that confronts you. You 
got to kill the thing because the thing is out to kill you. One of us going to die, and it's not me. I'm not dying now. I got grandchildren to live for now. I, yeah, 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 yeah. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I got a reason to live now. War against stubborn situations because they are a sign of a strong man. Pray aggressive, militant prayer. Don't pray your little nice, comfortable, powder poof, gentle Jesus, meek and mild prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, Father God, we thank you, mighty Father God. Stop those kinds of prayers. They are an abomination. When you go to God, you say, Father, I come in the name of Jesus, and you continue to come. Don't say Father again. Don't say the name of Jesus again until you finish the prayer. You call God's name too much in your prayer. And that is wasting time. That is vain repetition. I can't stand when I hear people pray like that anymore. Our Father, I come to you today. Enough. Don't mention him again. He knows you're addressing him. Since you pray prayers like that, the devil knows he's dealing with a novice. A little baby who doesn't know how to address situations to the heavenly throne. Hey, 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 hey. Pray aggressive military prayers because you're dealing with a strong entity that is stubborn. Plead the blood of Jesus ever so often. Never mind preachers who tell you you're wasting the blood. Plead the blood of Jesus ever so often. Yes, yes. And say out loud, I bind the strong man. I bind you. You're not going to mess with me again. I want my goods and I want it now. I want all that God has for me. I want all that Christ died for. I want everything that Christ died for. I'm not dying until I get everything that Christ died for. I want all of my blessings and I want them now. I want all of my breakthrough and I want them now. Oh God, arise and perfect my glory. Let the blood of Jesus stand between me and every strange altar. Secure my destiny as I bind this strong man. The blood of Jesus must pass through my family and clean out every affliction. Let the blood of Jesus open all the gates that are shut against me. Scatter the covenant of fear that tried to operate in my life. Separate me from the iniquities of other men and from the iniquities of the men of my family so that it does not affect my life. Oh God, arise and let my story change. Let my story change. Oh God, arise and change my story. Change it. Change my story. Change it from loss to victory from loss to glory change my story oh god arise and change my story <sighs> let the keys of success come into my hands in the name of jesus give me the keys of success let addition run ahead of me run all around me drop on top of me like an 18 wheel truck loaded down with benefits Dry up the enemy's power base. Dry up the enemy's power base. Let the keys of success come into my hand. Let my story change. Let my story change. Dry up the enemy's power base. Let the keys of success come into my hand. Let the keys of success come into my hand. Dry up the enemy's power base. Oh Lord God, let my story change in the name of Jesus. God of suddenlies, appear in my situation. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, I felt that anointing hit there. God of suddenlies appear, appear, appear. Bind every wandering spirit, forest spirit, evil angels, occultic powers, spirit wise, spirit husband, vagabond spirit, spirit of strife, spirit of gossip, spirit of competitive jealousy, ancestral spirits. Oh yes, oh yes. Pestilence that walk by night, terrors that walk in the day, wicked personalities, evil angels, Witchcraft powers, ancestral spirits, racism, oh God, recruitment agents, night caterers, dream manipulators, satanic agents, diviners, powers from the moon that strike by night, spirit of lust, spirit of hate, I curse cancer, I curse AIDS, I curse diabetes, I curse them, 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 I curse them. I curse sickness, malady. I curse disease and infirmity. I curse it. I curse it. Tumors and growth. I curse boils. I curse rashes. I curse internal and external uh, 
diseases of the skin, diseases of the bone, diseases of the blood. Let healing flow. Let healing flow. Let kidneys be renewed. Let hearts be renewed. Let lungs be renewed. Let God arise and the enemy be scattered. Dry up the enemy's power base. Let the strong man collapse from off of his throne. Strong man in my bloodline, fall over and die. Cease and desist your works. Strong man in my bloodline, fall on your face and die. In the name of Jesus. I explain the word die, what it means. We know spirits don't die, but their work, the thing that they have come to do, that can die. I pray for you today that the hand of God, why do you do these teachings? Because a part of my apostolic call is casting out demons and bringing deliverance to people. I know it, so I don't shy away from it. You can't have penetrating power and you're not penetrating anything. As long as demonic strongholds exist, that power can work against them and defeat them. I rise up in apostolic rank. I rise up in apostolic anointing. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua the Messiah. I rise up with his authority, with his power. And declare grace, grace. I declare blessing, blessing. I declare help, help in the authority of Yeshua's mighty name, man. Deliverance must come to you and stay with you. God must get glory out of your life. May the Lord be glorified in your life this night. To the glory of God, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I thank you for your time. Usually I go for an hour, but what else is new? It's just... 15 minutes more of prayer and teaching can't do you any wrong. Are you feeling me now? So I'm not, I'm not apologizing for tonight. I'm not apologizing for the word of God. The strength of your enemy is the maintenance of your ignorance. As long as you don't have pertinent biblical information on a subject, Satan can keep you as his captive for a very long time and destroy you. My people are destroyed because they don't know. And they don't know they don't know. And when somebody tells them they don't know, instead of them getting the knowledge... They get an attitude, and I'm tired of people with attitude, and so I don't apologize for being uh, 15 minutes later. I may be on tomorrow more than once. Just watch for me. I'll give you like five, ten minutes warning before I come on. But I'm going to have a busy day, but I got this feeling that I'm going to be on tomorrow. So watch for our brother. May the Lord bless and keep you and grant you deliverance from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Lord, the power, the glory forever and forever. We bind the strong man. And he is bound. Inoperative. Cannot work against us. God bless. Apostle is out.